Welcome to Plus Sports, the show where we give a different perspective on sports and look at the stories of athletes who not only amaze, but also inspire. I'm Patricia bermudez He's on Here, we will give you not just the latest in the sporting world, but also the stories behind the athletes' struggles, victories, and motivation. We go beyond the stats as we celebrate the great athletic feats with you. With that said, let's take a look at what's happening in the Olympics as we take on Tokyo. Last night was a night in Philippine sports history that will be remembered forever because for the first time ever, a Filipino athlete was able to win a gold at the Olympics. After winning a silver medal in the 2016 Rio Olympics, Diaz struck gold this time around and ruled the women's 55-kilogram weightlifting division. She edged out China's Liao Qiyun, who is a world champion and a record holder in the division. Hidalin Diaz started out strong and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Liao, lifting 97 kilograms to tie Liao in the snatch. Diaz then improved in clean and jerk, where the 30-year-old cleared 199 kilograms in her first try. Looking to move away from her competitors, Liao surged ahead by lifting 123 kilograms, raising her total to 220 kilograms before Diaz answered by clearing 124 kilograms to give her 221 kg overall. Liao was able to retake the lead by clearing 126 kilos, but Diaz could not be denied and went for the gold, lifting a record 127 kilograms to put her total at 224 and secure the country's first Olympic gold medal. The event was a heart racing affair with both Liao and Diaz refusing to give up and trying to outdo the other and bringing the best out of each other as competitors. But when she had the opportunity to deliver our first gold medal, our very own Hidalin Diaz delivered and lifted the Philippines on her shoulders to give the country this Olympic glory. Mabuhay ka, Hidalin. Wow, what an amazing feat. I'm sure this is gonna be gonna be one of those moments that you will remember forever. Hidalin Diaz's historic gold medal victory is truly a remarkable achievement and will be remembered in Philippine sports history. But the country's journey at the Tokyo Olympics is far from over as four other Filipino athletes are also set to compete at the Games today, including another weightlifter looking to follow in Diaz's steps. The Philippines will have another representative at the Tokyo International Forum tonight when late weightlifter Elrin Ando participates in the women's 64-kilogram weight classification. But while Diaz is a battle-tested veteran who has competed in four straight Olympics and previously won in Rio, Ando is making her Olympic debut but is already considered as one of the country's top weightlifting prospects. At just 22 years old, Ando is already set to compete at the highest level of competitive sports, and this comes less than 10 years after she began her weightlifting career after being discovered by a weightlifting coach while still studying at the University of Cebu. Ando and her coaches said that they thought making the Olympics was only a dream for her, especially since she is still an up-and-coming star in the sport. But even though she is young and doesn't have much experience, she makes up for it in talent and is hoping that she'll be able to carry on to a strong performance in Tokyo. Another Filipino athlete set to compete in the Olympics today is swimmer Luke Gebi, who is set to take part in the men's 100-meter freestyle event tonight. Gebi is no stranger to competing internationally, having participated in the FINA World Championships in South Korea and the 2019 Southeast Asian Games, where he won a silver and gold medal. In one of his interviews before he headed off to Tokyo, he said that similar to other athletes, making the Olympics is a dream for him. But more than that, the 24-year-old put his feet of reaching the Olympics in perspective, saying that he hopes to inspire the next generation of Filipino swimmers to also reach for their Olympic dreams. A few years ago, he was also just an inspiring Olympian. But through his determination and hard work, he was able to make his dream a reality.
Another swimmer set to join the pools today is Remedy Rule, who was aiming to win a medal in the women's 200-meter butterfly event. She already competed in the preliminaries of the women's 100-meter butterfly event, but fell short of reaching the semifinals. But one thing going for Rule is that she has made more success in the women's 200-meter butterfly event as she won a silver medal in the 2019 Southeast Asian Games for the same event. Rule was previously a part of the University of Texas swimming team in the NCAA in the United States, but later on started representing the country in swimming competitions in 2019. That move paid off with stints in different international tournaments and medals at the SEA Games. Rule is hoping that the second time will be the charm for her in Tokyo as she looks to make it to the next round in this event tonight. The first athlete to compete in today's event is actually Judoka Kiyomi Watanabe, who is set to face Spain's Cristina Cabana Perez in a round of 32 match in the women's 63 kilogram division. We've already previously talked about her story and her desire to make her native Cebu proud in these games, and we know that her Kababayans are rooting for her. We all are. Watanabe was one of the country's flag bearers during the Olympics opening ceremonies, and this time she finally gets to prove herself. And though she fell short against her opponent, she can still have a chance to medal in these games. But for merely representing Cebu and the Philippines in Tokyo and carrying her flag in the opening ceremonies, I'm sure people are already proud of her and she can hold her head high when she returns home after the games. Now, ladies and gentlemen, with day three of the Olympics in the books, we can now take a look at the latest Olympic medal tally. At the start of day four, host country Japan leads the medal table with eight golds and 13 total medals. The United States, which finished with the most medals in Rio five years ago, is at second with seven golds and 15 medals. China is in third spot with six golds and 18 gold medals. The Russian athletes competing under the Russian Olympic Committee flag are fourth with four golds and 12 medals, while Great Britain rounds out the top five with three golds and eight total medals. After Great Britain, rather, it is South Korea, Australia, Kosovo, Italy, and France that complete the top 10 on the medal table. But over at 16th place and tied with several other countries, that's the Philippines. Would you look at that? The country entered the board with one gold medal thanks to Hidalin Diaz's victory in weightlifting last night. Right now, we have an exclusive interview with someone who was there and someone who knows what it takes to be an athlete and achieve one's golden dreams. We have with us International Olympic Committee's Executive Board Member, Mikey Kowanko jaworski Thanks so much, Mikey, for being with us. First off, congratulations to our entire country and, of course, the entire Philippine sports community. It took 97 long years and how sweet this victory is. This victory is, of course, something that uh, the IOC also celebrates. Well, you know what? Well, first, hi, everyone, and really happy to be here finally with you, Shai. And um, the great part is how everybody is so happy for us. All my friends and colleagues, everyone on the side of the IOC, you know, um, a lot of comments came out of that opening ceremony um, entrance, the Parade of Athletes. And of course, we were there. We didn't hear what was being said. But now, after this gold medal, it was like that's totally erased. And it actually made people aware that the Philippines did not, until last night, have a gold medal. And everyone's just so happy for us. So, syempre, nakakatuwa din kasi the victory is not just ours as a country, but the, the Olympic movement realizes how important it is. You were there at the 2016 Rio Olympic Games to witness her silver medal finish. And that was we were there. Hard. We were there together. And Jan, uh, you were there last night to witness her golden yeah. performance. I'm sure that was uh, such a, a wonderful feeling to see how she battled it out in that 55 kilogram weight division against China's Liao Qiyun. Can you tell me what was going through your mind as you witnessed, especially those final moments before she clinched that medal and as she uh, pushed on to get that uh, gold medal lift? 
I think it was just as hard at the very, very beginning, like when the athletes were being introduced and I was asked to sit on the front row. So I was right there and I didn't really know how I should, I should uh, act or watch because I was afraid you know, she could see me, it might be distracting. And well, of course, she was so focused that it wouldn't matter probably if I was on top of the weight itself, other than how heavy I am. But it was, um, you know, remember when we were watching in Rio, it was, we, we were really not expecting anything, hoping for the best. We knew that she was good, she prepared. And, um, you know, it could have been anything at that stage. So when she got the silver, after we thought it was going to be bronze, it was already, wow, talagang bonus na. But coming into this, the expectations were different. You know, parang people were saying, eh, kung naka-silver na siya, di dapat gold na ngayon. Eh, as if naman athletes and machines na ganda na. But we also know that she prepared. Uh, maybe also because of the pandemic, it was difficult for her, but she also was uh, really forced to just keep training and keep doing what she was doing, which, you know, she was telling a bit of the story anyway in her interview, which I was, um, which I, which I heard. And uh, I think it was like, ayaw mong mag-expect kasi ayaw mong ma-disappoint, pero alam mo magaling siya. And you're, you know, you're, you, you don't want to put pressure as a fellow athlete, but you want to just show support and really, as a Filipino, <laughs> hope for that goal. But you know what? She was different. She was different. You could see the quality, the maturity compared to Rio, um, how she has matured as an athlete, as a person. It was very evident and her, her preparation. And, you know, so her body was different also. There, it was, um, she was really ready for that gold. You were talking about being an athlete yourself, uh, being able to clinch a medal by digging really deep is something that is very familiar to you. Uh, what do you think went through Heidi's mind as she did something that she's never before done, which is lift 127 at clean and jerk? And what does it take for an athlete like that to surpass even his or her own limits? You know, she broke the Olympic record. So Heidi now holds the Olympic record for clean and jerk. And she tried to break it in the snatch, but she was unsuccessful. You know, sitting there um, along with um, the other officials really gave me also an appreciation of the technical side of weightlifting. So the way that uh, her coaching staff was deciding how much she should lift, go up, go you know, go heavier. That was all just as much a part of her victory as her lifting, being able to lift those weights itself. So, you know, it was, um, I think if you go to an Olympic Games, then you're going to have to prepare as best as you can and be ready to leave it all out there. Because if you're going to try to go for gold, you're also going to take a lot of risks. And I think that's how it is. You prepare as best as you can, but you also have to realize that you could be asked for more to get that gold than what you thought you would be. And all the years, all the experiences, it's not just what you bring today. It's, it's, a, it's a collection of even your youth, even your personal experiences, your everything that that makes you the person that you are because really physical preparedness is one thing, but it's not holistic. So there's the physical part, there's the mental part, the psychological part, and there's even the spiritual part, which in my case, that's that was what made it for me. I think that... that um, when I won that golden goose and having to dig really quite deep, it was really the spiritual preparedness that, that brought me through. 
I really love that perspective because our show is all about that, right? The stories behind the motivation of athletes. Um, as you uh, celebrated with the entire team, with the entire delegation, soon after uh, she had been uh, officially uh, been awarded that, that medal, can you tell us a little bit more about the emotion that was happening, how people were feeling, particularly Heidi? Uh, we all witnessed, we all saw, uh, whether in pictures or on television or online, uh, of course, she was super emotionally charged and that is uh, something that was mirrored all throughout the country, all of us who witnessed it. But you, you were there. Tell us a little bit more about every single person's emotion and, and how that was as an experience for you. It was electric. That's that's what I can say. You know, I, I was... Um I, it was on re, it was on my schedule to really award the medals for this event, and I had asked to. And for me, it didn't even matter um, what the result would be. Of course, I'm saying that, but <laughs> syempre, hoping talaga that you know it would be ideal that was going to be on that top spot. And um, it, it was electric. I don't even know how else to describe it because. Every single person who was there, every Filipino who was there, had, had their own story behind yeah. that story. And it was um, shared and yet so personal. And it was all about what Heidi had achieved. It was whatever it is you're going through as a Filipino, whatever kind of relationship you have today with your country, that was rich, rich by Heidi. And the way that she was so magnanimous in her victory, you know, hindi siya naging mayabang, hindi siya naging, kasi magaling ako. You know, she was saying like, oh, my team was behind me and I have support from people who love me and friends. And it, it, she acknowledged that it took a village. So I think, I think it made everybody feel special. Even if she doesn't point at you and say thank you, you know, you know that you're a part of it. So, so I think everyone who was there to witness it last night, you know, it was when when the national anthem was being played, always an emotional moment. It's as if there was a whole you know, choir that was there because you could hear everybody singing the national anthem, and you would not even know that there were that many Filipinos watching Heidi. You know, so so there were there from the POC, the PSP. We were all we were all there, and you know we're not allowed to shout and cheer, but it was like under a mask. It was like, ah! <laughs> you know, so it was it was so no, it was, it was really. I I I pray that that everybody everybody realizes that. Each, each one has had a part in, in all of it. And even me, you know, as an athlete, I won't, I won't put words or, or thoughts or emotions in, into Heidi's, um, it, you know, on behalf of Heidi. But you, you come to the realization that it takes a village. And it yes. starts from, from when you're young. You know, it's, it's a foundation that's built, that culminates in Whatever the climax of your career is, and certainly this is one, not just for Heidi, I mean, this, this achievement is, is, is massive. I, yes. I don't even know how to express how huge this is in the entire sporting world. Certainly, all of us were in tears hearing the national anthem, but we're obviously uh, beaming with pride hearing the national anthem play in the Olympics, finally, after I all know. that. And you, you had the honor of awarding her the medal, as you mentioned. Uh, tell us what you were able to share with her or say to her as you're about to give that medal. Well, first, I, I really said, this is yours. Sayo talaga to, Hides. You know, it, it, it's... In every way that you can think of, of how I could possibly mean that, it's hers. It's something that no one can take away from her at any point in time or history right now. And uh, it's something that, that she should always keep in her heart in good times and in bad and, and, and to remember the journey of how she got there. So... I, I told her, sayo talaga to hide. Salamat sa Panginoon para dito. Alam ko ginawa mo to para sa Diyos, para sa bayan natin. And I, I wished her well. 
knowing as an athlete, as a female athlete, that age, doing what you've been doing for a long time. I know she has dreams in her life and this is opening new doors. So sinabi ko sa kanya, um, I wish you the best hide sa, sa future mo, kung ano man ang gusto mong gawin. And thank you. I thanked her. I mean, blood, sweat, and tears that, that go into this, whatever was her motivation. This is something that's shared by us as a country. So I thanked her for that. And, you know, in my heart, I was there. Not as Mikey, the IOC member. The, you know, it wasn't that. It was, it was the Filipino. And I knew, I knew a lot of people would be thinking, ah, oh, you know, congratulate Heidi for us, you know, thank her for us. And for me, it was, I, I wanted to, to be able to do that somehow, you know. Wow, what a beautiful experience. Thank you so much for sharing it with all of us. I think this is going to be one of those moments where we're going to look back and say, where were you when? when Heidelin won that first Olympic medal. Finally, Mikey, what is your message for the rest of the athletes who are still vying for uh, that Olympic medal and still have hopes to deliver uh, something wonderful and astonishing for the Philippines? You know, our athletes are performing well here. They're focused. You can see their determination, the incentives that have been offered to the medalists by the government and the private sector. That means a lot to our athletes. And um, it also means uh, something that they can um, use it for in their future. You know, so our athletes, alam naman natin, may puso. And honestly, when you come to an Olympic Games or even an Asian Games or a Sea Games, everyone fights na may puso. And our athletes, I know, are, are so determined to deliver that. Just the look on their faces, the way that they're performing. You can see who really understands um, the stakes here, not just, well, not just personally, but for the country. So we are looking forward to more medals. <laughs> of course, <laughs> we're competing, Deva, and we're, we're just, you know, hoping and praying for the best. I know that our athletes are inspired by Heidi's victory. I know that they're going to be, you know, more focused and more determined. Kaya we're supporting our athletes, all of us are. Hindi lang kami, ganun dito, alam ko, lahat ng mga sa Pilipinas, and all over the world who are Filipinos. So, you know, thank you in advance for bringing us pride and we're all doing you. Thank you so much, Mikey. We appreciate your time spent here on Plus Sports. And that was Mikey Kowanko Jaworski, our IMC executive board member, sharing with us uh, how the emotions were in the feet of Heidelin Diaz. And that is it for our take on Tokyo. <music>Every day we here at Plus Sports talk about the achievements of athletes here and abroad in a segment called Athletes Feet. We've already talked about her today, but because of the magnitude of what she accomplished last night, we're going to break down Heidelin Diaz's Olympic gold medal in a special edition of Athletes Feet. For the first time ever, we heard the Lupang Hinirang playing at the Olympic medal ceremony, and that is thanks to her performance of a lifetime. To put this victory into perspective, the Philippines waited 97 long years before the country's won or the country won its first Olympic gold medal. The country previously won 10 medals at the Olympics, three silvers and seven bronzes, but none of our previous Olympians were able to accomplish what Diaz did. Diaz is a four-time Olympian competing in the 20 or 2008 Beijing Olympics, the 2012 London Olympics, and the 2016 Rio Olympics, where she won a silver medal. She began her first Olympic stint by being selected as a wild card entry in Beijing and then wasn't able to finish the competition in London four years later after failing to lift 118 kilograms in three attempts. But now, not only was she able to lift those weights, but she is also able to set records in her class and more importantly, win that elusive gold medal for the Philippines. And that is Hidalin Diaz's incredible athlete's feat. Every day 
we also feature the achievements of female athletes who are able to accomplish incredible feats and have stories that inspire others. And right now, what story is more inspiring than that of Filipina winning the Philippines' first ever gold medal in these games? Well, through her perseverance and determination, she was able to do something that no other Filipino Olympian had done before, which is take home a gold medal. But even before she got to Tokyo, her journey to these Olympics is almost as incredible as her accomplishment due to the obstacles and challenges that she had to face. This is how Hidalin Diaz overcame all of these challenges. And that is why she is our woman in sports. Before she could even make it to Tokyo, Diaz struggled to find additional funds for her training and expenses and had to ask for help. Then when she needed to join more tournaments for her to qualify for Tokyo, the COVID-19 pandemic struck and she was stopped from attending an Olympic qualifying event in Peru that forced the 30-year-old to stay in Malaysia for five months to train and prepare in the midst of uncertainty. According to Diaz, she built a gym and training with water bottles during the time just to prepare for the Olympics. But after a long delay and much uncertainty, she was able to qualify for Tokyo and make it to her fourth Olympics. That meant that she would have a chance to win the Philippines its first Olympic gold medal, which is exactly what she did for overcoming all of these challenges and still performing at her best at the highest level of competitive sports. This is what makes Hidalin Diaz's story truly inspirational. And that's it for Women in Sports. We now quickly take a look at the world of basketball. The PBA just ended its second week with a triple header and will begin its third week with another three-game affair. Here's everything you need to know about that on Inbound. The Philippine Cup continues on Wednesday with a triple header. In the first game, San Miguel looks to keep their winning run going when they face off against the Blackwater Bossing. In the second game, the Rain or Shine Elasto Painters stake their unbeaten 3-0 record against the Alaska Aces, which currently have a 1-2 card. And in the third game, the Morocco Bolts look to bounce back from their first loss of the conference when they battle the 1-2 Phoenix Super LPG Fuel Masters. And that is all for our Inbound. Before we go, we want to go back to the Olympics where more Filipino athletes are set to compete. Aside from Kiyomi Watanabe, we also have our swimmers taking to the pools to represent flag and country. And later tonight, another weightlifting bet who looks to follow up on Hidalin Diaz's accomplishment from last night is also competing. So let's all support our athletes competing today and in the coming days as they strive for Olympic glory. A lot of people are asking us how they can watch the games and many have already been following Signal TV5 and Smart GigaFest and even listening to updates on Radio Pilipinas and of course uh, reading all the articles that are coming from our wonderful Filipino journalists. For more sports stories here and abroad that not only just inform but also inspire, catch Plus Sports every day on Plus Network. That's it for us here in Plus Sports. I'm Patricia Bermuda-Sizan. Thanks so much for watching.